we are going to discuss the solutions to the final exam on probability and statistics. We're going to go through the solutions to the nine problems on the following topics. We're going to talk about the conditional probability, the expected value, and expected value of a function of the random variable. So we will discuss how to evaluate the probabilities in a continuous case and discuss the joint distributions. And also we're going to talk about the how to evaluate the probabilities if the random variables have the exponential distributions. And also we will do a small simulations and generate the random variables under the different distributions. And quickly discuss the Markov chains and at the end we'll discuss how to derive the distribution of a sum of the two independent random variables. So let's start from the first problem. This is the problem for the conditional probability and we are going to solve this in a two different ways. So there are nine digits in a box. We're going to choose two digits without replacement. It means that when we choose the first one, we don't put this back. If the sum of the two digits is even, what is the probability that both of them are odd? Right? So we need to find a conditional probability that the sum is already even, and what is the probability that both of the digits which we chose are odd? So we are going to solve this in a two different way. The first way is we would like to evaluate this by finding the number of the ways of picking two odd digits and dividing this to the number of the ways of picking two odd digits plus the number of the ways of picking two even digits, right? So the sum is even all in the two cases when both of the digits are odd or both of the digits are even. So we are going to set up the set of even digits. It's going to be 2, 4, 6, and 8. And the set of odd digits are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So probability of choosing one odd digit is 1 over 5. And probability of choosing one even digit is 1 over 4. So the number of the ways of picking two numbers when the sum is odd is number of the picking ways of picking two odds and number of the ways of picking two even. It's going to be the combination of 4 and 2, so we need to pick two numbers from here, right? Plus, the, we need to pick two numbers from this set. So this is going to be 60. And if you put this here, it's going to be the combination of 5 and 2. It's the number of the ways of picking two odd digits. Dividing this to the number of the ways of picking two even digits plus the number of the ways of picking two odd digits is going to be 10 over 16 or 5 over 8. So we can solve the same problem using the Bayes theorem. According to the Bayes theorem, it tells me that if I would like to find the conditional probability that the sum is even, uh, what is the probability that two digits are odd if the sum is already even, I can evaluate this using this formula. So I just need to evaluate these three probabilities. So let's do this. So number of the picking any two digits out of nine digits, it's combination of the two and nine which is going to be set of 6. So probability of picking t odd digits is going to be the number of the ways of picking t odd digits divided the, to the number of the ways of picking any t digits. It's going to be 10 over 60, 36. And probability of choosing even digits is it's going to be like a uh, t probabilities, right? So either it's like a picking the odd digits plus picking the even digits and divide this to the number of the ways of picking any two digits. It's going to be the probability of choosing even digits. So this is going to be the combination 5 and 2 plus combination 4 of 2. It's the number of the ways of picking two odd digits. This is the number of the ways of picking two even digits. Divide this to the number of the ways of picking any two digits. It's going to be 16 over 36. Then I put this everything to here. So if the two digits are odd, what is the probability that the sum is even? So if the two digits are odd, then the uh, sum is even for sure, right? So probability that sum is even when the two digits are odd is equal to the 1. Probability of picking t odd is 10 over 36. I'm going to put this here. And probability of choosing sum to be even is 16 over 36. And I'm going to put it here. And I will get the same answer as in the previous method. Second problem is on the expectation of a function of a random variable. So if the random variable has the following outputs with equal probabilities, find the value of the c so that this expectation is minimal. So what I would like to do is I would like to use the formula for the expected value of a function of some random variable. This is going to be equal to 
We need to evaluate the function for each of the output of the random variable, then multiply this to the corresponding probability of appearance of this random variable. So if I put this 3, 5, 7, 8, 9 instead of xi, and probability of xi is always the same, 1 over 5, so that is why I can write this separately. So if I put 3 instead of x here, it's going to be 3 minus c in a square. If I put 5, it's going to be 5 minus c in a square, and so on. So what I would like to do is I would like to open the squares and I would like to do this in a smarter way, right? So I would uh, open all the first terms. This is going to be the square root of 3 plus square root of 5 plus square root of 7 and so on. It's going to be 9 plus 25, 49 and so on. Then the second term here is minus 2c multiplied to the 3, right? So here minus 2c multiplied to the 5. Here minus 2c multiplied to the 7. So I would like to take out take out the minus tc and what is left is 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 and the last term here is c squared here as well here as well here as well so we are going to have additionally 5 c squares so this is the function of the expectation of the x minus c in the square so we need to evaluate the value for the c when this expectation is minimum right in order to do this, using the calculus, we're going to take the derivative of this function with respect to the c. So basically, we need to take the derivative from this part, right-hand side part, with respect to the c. So the derivative of all of these terms is equal to the 0 since they are constant. The derivative of this term is going to be minus c multiplied to the sum, right, which is going to be, say, the t multiplied to the minus t, it's going to be minus 64. And the derivative of this one is plus 10c. We need to equalize this to the 0 and find the c, so the c is going to be equal to the 6.4. For the value of the c, 6.4, this function is going to be minimum. So I know that this is minimum because it, it is the parabola with a positive constant here. It means that it's look upward and the uh, experiment point is going to be minimum here. So since the second derivative is going to be positive, right, and it means that the parabola looking up. So number three, a random variable x is, has uniform distribution uh, in the interval between zero and four. Find the probability that the roots of this quadratic equation are real. So the roots of the quadratic equation are real if the b squared minus 4ac are, is more than zero, where b, a, and c are the coefficient of the quadratic equation. So here, b is going to be the constant instead of t, it's going to be x. A is the constant instead of t squared, which is 1, and c is the free coefficient, which is going to be tx plus, plus 3 over 4. If I put everything here, I'm going to get this term, and if I simplify this, I'm going to get this term. So let me regroup this to the linear fractions, it's linear terms, it's going to be x minus 3 multiplied to the x plus 1, then this is going to be more than 0, and this is more than 0, either x is less than minus 1, Either x is more than 3. So in the two cases, in the two intervals, so this term is going to be positive. So in order to evaluate the probability that the random variable x is less than minus 1 or more than 3, we need to know the density function of this random variable. We can find a density function by dividing the, uh, by finding the length of the interval, which is going to be 4, and finding its reciprocal. So the density function of this random variable is going to be equal to the 1 over 4 if the x is between 0 and 4, and 0 otherwise. So that is why the probability that x is less than minus 1, which is not in this interval, is going to be equal to the 0. And in order to evaluate the probability that x is more than 3, we need to integrate the density function from 0 to the 4, because up to the 4, the density function is equal to the 0 simply. So if I put the values and integrate this, I'm going to get the value 1 over 4. So the probability that uh, the roots of this uh, quadratic equation are positive is 1 over 4. So the problem number 4 is on the joint distributions. In a discrete case, the probability mass function, the joint probability mass function is given using this formula, where x and y are the two random variables. x can take the values 0 and 1, y can take the values 0, 1, 2, 3. So first of all, we need to fill out this table. So this is the table for the joint distribution. This is called the table of the probability distribution of the x, or sometimes it is called the marginal probability of the x. So 
So this is the marginal probability after y. So in order to fill up this table, so we need to put these two values, for example, 0 and 0, to here to this function, evaluate the probability. If I put 0 and 0, it's going to be 0. If I put 0 and 1, it's going to be 1 over set of 6. If I put 0 and 2, it's going to be 2 over set of 6, and so on. So I fill this table. Please note that the sum of all the numbers here is equal to the 1. So this is the proper probability mass function. So if I would like to find the marginal probability of the x, so I will need to sum the, all the numbers in the rows, right? So I'm asking here, so what is the probability that x is equal to the 0, no matter what is the y? So it means that I just need to sum all the numbers here. It's going to be equal to 6 over 16. And probability that x is equal to the 1, it means that I need to sum all the numbers here in the second row. So I can fill out this in this way. So probability that y is equal to the 0, it means that what is the probability of the y, no matter what is the x. So I need to sum these two numbers, it's going to be 1 over set of 6. If I sum two of these numbers, it's going to be 3 over set of 6, and so on. So, if, uh, so I've got the tables for the prob joint probability, and the probability of the x, and the probability of the y. So second problem is we need to evaluate the probability that x is more than y. So in a discrete case, I need to go through all the cases where x value is more than y. Fortunately for us, there is only one case when x is more than 1. There is when the x is equal to the 1 and y is equal to the 0. So I need to look up to the value of this probability. This is going to be 1 over 76. This is when x is equal to the 1 and y is equal to the 0. Problem number, uh, so the next problem on this Section is we need to identify whether the x and y are independent. So the two variables are independent if the multiplication of the marginal probabilities is equal to the value of the joint probability. So it should be true for all the cases. If there is only at least one case when it, is, it doesn't work, it means that the variables are dependent. So th these two variables are dependent because, for example, the prob marginal probability of the y is equal to the 0 and marginal probability of the x is equal to the 0 are non-zero numbers. If you multiply them, you're going to get the non-zero number, right? And this is not equal to the probability of x is equal to the 0 and y is equal to the 0. So this, this equation doesn't work for at least one case. It means that the two variables are continuing the solutions to the final exam on probability and statistics course. The problem number five is about the exponential distribution. The admission office of IUT receives T calls in every three minutes in average, and the number of the calls follow the Poisson distribution. So let X be the waiting time between the T consecutive calls, and we need to answer to the following questions. Basically, what is the distribution of the x and what are the parameters of this distribution? What is the probability that waiting time between the t consecutive calls is less than 1 minute? And what is the probability that the time between the t consecutive calls is more than 3 minutes if they have already waited for more than 2 minutes? So, if the number of the calls has the Poisson distribution, then the number of the so amount of the waiting time between the t con consecutive calls is going to have the exponential distribution was the following density functions. And it is also noticeable to know that the cumulative probability function for the exponential distribution has this formula, where this f of x means probability that the waiting time is less than the small x. So here, lambda means average number of the calls in some unit of time, for example, in one unit. It is going to be equal to the 2 over 3. So if, in average, the university receives 2 calls per 3 minutes, then every minute it receives 2 over 3 calls in average. So that is why the average waiting time between the t consecutive calls is going to be equal to the 3 over t minutes. So, or basically 1 over lambda. So depending on which formula you're using, you need to choose the proper parameters. So probability that x is less than 1 is evaluated using the cumulative probability function. So instead of x here, I'm just going to substitute 1, and this is going to be equal to the 1 minus e in the power of minus 2 over 3. This is the probability that waiting time is less than 1 minute. So in the next problem, we need to discuss what is the probability that waiting time is more than 3 minutes if we have already waited for more than 2 minutes. So in order to solve this problem, we're going to use the memory-less property of the exponential distribution 
it just basically tells me that probability that we're waiting more than three minutes if we have already waited more than two minutes starts is the same as probability of waiting more than one minute. So we just need to subtract this number from this number. Then the probability that x is more than one minute is equal to the one minus probability of x is less than one minute. And we just need to substitute probability of x less than one minute with the solution which we solved before, right? So this is going to be equal to the one minus one minus e in the power of minus two or three. So this is going to be equal to the e in the power of minus two or three. It's the probability of waiting time more than one minute, or probability of waiting time is more than three minutes if we have already waited for more than two minutes. Problem number six is about the Bernoulli trial or procedure of the Bernoulli trial. Bernoulli trial is when we have the two possible outputs for our random variable, one or zero, and the probability of the one is equal to the p, probability of zero is equal to the zero. So we need to write a procedure which gives us values one or zero randomly with this distribution p. So what we are going to do is we're going to use this function random. It is going to give us any random value between zero and one was the uniform distribution and I'm just going to check its value. So if this random value is less than p, which is given, then I'm going to return 1 as the x. And if this value is more than p, I'm going to return 0. So the reason for this is if the random value, so this function randomizer have the density function, probability that this random value here is going to be less than p is equal to the p since this integration from 0 to the 1 of the density function is going to give me p. So this reasoning is correct. So if the u is less than p, I'm going to return 1 because its probability is going to be equal to the p. And the, if this is bigger than p, I'm going to return 0. So in the second problem, we need to write a procedure which imitates the binomial distribution. So binomial distribution is the number of the it's a distribution of the number of the successful trials when we do the Bernoulli trial n times right so what I need to do is I'm given the p the number of the successful trials in a single so probability of successful trial in a single trial um, probability of success in a single trial n is the number of the trials and m is going to be sum of successful trials so I'm starting with the m is equal to the 0, and I just need to count, I just need to call the Bernoulli trial n times, and count the number of the times when it returns the 1, right? So I can just count this by summing the output of the Bernoulli trial, because it returns me either 1, either 0. When it returns 0, I will just not add anything here. When it returns 1, I will just add 1 here, so it counts me at the end the number of the 1s in the n trials. So this is going to imitate me the binomial distribution. So problem number seven is on the Markov chain. So Markov chain is kind of the uh, neural networks. So we are going to have the states and the probability of changing the states at every single time step. So let's cons consider this Markov chain about the weather. So in a look in a in, in some locality, we're going to change the weather either from rain to the clear, either from rain to the rain, or from clear to the rain, or clear to the clear. So if we observe some data, and we've got a probability that weather is going to be changed from rain to the clear with a probability 0 0.3, and from clear to the rain with a probability 0 0.1. So in order to find the steep probabilities, we need to subtract those numbers from the 1 and fill this here. So basically, the P matrix, which is the one-step transition probability matrix, has the sum to be equal to the 1 in every single row. So this row should be equal to the 1, and this row should be equal to the 1 in the sum. So this is called the P matrix, one-step transition probability for the Markov chains. So we need to compute all steady-state probabilities. Basically, if we just like it, so this is... If you are in one of the states, if you would like to know what is the probability that you will be in a second state, you just need to use this matrix, right? If you are in a state rain, the probability that you will be in a clear state is 0.3. So now let's go, let's change the states randomly using this matrix infinitely many times. 
and I would like to know what is the probability that I will end up in this state in a state of rain or in this state in a state of clear. So again, so if we are starting from one of the states and if we are changing the states according to this matrix at every single step, time step, and if you do infinitely many time steps, what is the probability that at the end we're going to find ourselves in the rain state or in the clear state? So those probabilities are called the steady state probabilities and we are going to find this using this equation or you can just run this simulation for a long time and see what is those probabilities. So solution of the system, so the system of linear equations which is written in the matrix form is going to give us pi 1 and pi 2 are going to be the steady state probabilities. So let us write down those uh, the, this equation in a system of linear equation form. So this vector multiplied to this matrix is going to be this row multiplied to this column is equal to this row to the P1 and this row multiplied to the second is equal to the second element here. It's going to be equal to the 0 0.7 pi 1 plus 0 0.1 pi 2 is equal to the pi 1. Zero, pi 1 multiplied to the 0 0.3 plus pi 2 multiplied to the 0 0.9 is equal to the pi 2. And it is also note, noticeable that pi 1 plus pi 2 is equal to the 1. So by solving this system, we obtain that the pi 1 is equal to the 0 0.25, pi 2 is equal to the 0 0.75. What does it mean? It means that if we start from some state, and if we change the states infinitely many times, probability that we'll end up in a state 1, in a state of rain, is 25%. Probability that we'll end up in a state 2 and a state of clear is 75%. So in a problem number 3 is just using this transition matrix, I would like to know what is the probability that if I start from 1, I will find myself at the 1 after 2 time steps. So basically, what is the probability that if today is rain, after 2 days it's going to be rain again, right? So this is equal to the probability either after one day it's going to be clear, then it will be rain again. Or every day, every two consecutive days, it's going to be rain. So either we're going to change the state from rain to the clear, then clear to the rain after one day, right? So that after two days it's going to be rain again. Either we're going to stay in the rain two times. So probability that this is equal to the 0 0.3 multiplied to the 0 0.1 plus probability of this is 0 0.7 multiplied to the 0 0.7, so in total we've got a probability is equal to the 0 0.52. It means that probability that if we are, if raining today, after two days it will be still raining is 52%. So problem number eight is theoretical, is about the conditional expected value. So we need to prove one of these equations. So the expected value of the conditional expectation of the x when y is already given is simply expectation of the x. So we are going to prove this using this equation. So the expected value of the x given y is equal to z. Again, so we're just going to use the formula for the expectation of the function of the random variable. So this is going to be equal to the xi multiplied to the probability of the xi for given y. And we are going to write down this expectation. So we're going to take the expectation of this with respect to the y. Because you see, so if you sum up everything, you're going to have a function which depends on y, right? So this is the function of the y. So that is why in order to find this expectation of the expectation of this one, we need to sum this with respect to the y. So this is going to be equal to the summation of the x, p of x, y is equal to the y, multiplied to the probability of the y. Then I'm going to write down this conditional probability in this form using the Bayes theorem, right? Probability of the x given y is equal to the probability of the x in y divided to the probability of the y. And this term and this term are going to be cancelled and I'm, I will have this term. And then I'm, go I'm going to write this in the different form. So I would like to write down this summation separately. So x is going to be in this summation. And the summation of this one is going to be made with respect to the y. So I can do this because x does not depend on the y. So if I sum up the joint distribution, so this is the joint distribution pr uh, probability, right? If I sum up the joint distribution probability with respect to the y, it's going to give me the marginal distribution of the x, right? 
and the summation of the x multiplied to the p of x is going to give me the expected value of the x. So we just proved that the expectation of this expectation is going to be equal to simply expectation of the x. Let's continue with discussing solutions to the problem number 9 on the sum of the t random variables. If the t random variables x and y are given with the following density functions, then their sum, which is z, has the following density function. So I'm just going to evaluate this by integrating, by evaluating this integration. So first of all, I need to substitute this density function with the value of the this density function. So you see, so this is equal to the 1 over 20 if the y is going to change from 10 to the 30. So I can just substitute this and I need to just change the intervals of the integration from 10 to the 30. So now in the next step, I'm going to substitute this density function with this one. But I see, so it, the argument of this density function is should be between 10 and 40. Only in this case, this is non-zero. This is equal to the 1 over 30. So if it's argument z minus y should be between 10 and 40, right? And this y is still should be between 10 and 30. So I need to figure out the values for the z so that this equality works. And at the same time, y is always between 10 and 30. So let me rewrite this equality in this form. So this is going to be written y is less than z minus 40 and z minus 10. So I need to figure out the values for the z so that it works and at the same time this equality also works. So let's choose the values of for the z from 20 for example. If I choose the 20, so this side is going to be 10. If I choose the 30, this side is going to be 20. If I choose the 40, this side is going to be 30. So this side is always works if I choose the values for the z from 20 to the 40. So if I put any value from 20 to the 40 to this side, this side is always going to be less than 10. So I just need to restrict this side to be equal to the 10 only. So if the z is between 20 and 40, then the y is going to change from 10 to the z minus 10. Right? So I just need to integrate the density function. I'm just going to substitute the density function, marginal density function of the x with 1 over 30 because this equality works, right? And by integrating, by evaluating this integrating, I, I obtain z minus 20. So case number two is I'm going to make the restriction to this part. So if I choose the value for the z from 50 to the 70, this side is going to work. And if I put the values from 50 to the 70 for the z, all the values on this side are going to be more than 40, more than 30, right? So that is why I'm going to restrict this part to be equal to the 30 only. So if the z is going to change from 50 to the 70, y is going to change from z minus 40, and this side is going to be simply 30. So in this case, the density function of the x is going to have the argument between 10 and 40. So that is why I can substitute this with 1 over 30. And I just need to integrate this with respect to the y, where y is going to change from z minus 40 until 30. So if I integrate this, I'm going to obtain 70 minus z. So that is why the density function of the z, which is the sum of the two values, x and y, is going to be equal to the z minus 20 over 600 if the z is between 10 and 40. 70 minus z over 600 if the z is between 50 and 70 and 0 otherwise.